The opinions expressed on this program are for general information only and are not intended to provide specific advice or recommendations for any individual. To determine which investments may be appropriate for you, consult with your attorney, accountant, financial advisor, or tax advisor prior to investing. Securities are offered through LPL Financial, member FINRA and SIPC. This is the Margie Shard Show on Super Talk 1570. You're listening to Margie Shard on the Margie Shard Radio Show, and I'm so excited to kick off my new radio show about finance, business, community, and the things that affect our lives on a daily basis. This show will air each Sunday on Super Talk 1570 from 10 to 11 a.m., and will also be available via podcast each Monday via our website at shardfinancial.com. And to ask a question or talk to a financial advisor, go to shardfinancial.com and click on the Ask Margie a Question link. So today in the studio, I'm so excited. I have Rebecca Bartley with Icon Mortgage Lending and Christy Candleberry with the Christy Candleberry team at Remax Grand. How are you doing, ladies? Great. Good. We are going to be talking today all about your house and the real estate market and the mortgage market. And, you know, for Americans, most Americans, the largest purchase that they'll make is their house. And it also makes it a lot of times their largest asset. So I'm often asked three questions from clients, then they're great questions, but they're really loaded questions. You know, the first one is how much should we spend on your on the house? And, you know, from a financial planner aspect, it is, you know, you can't just throw a number out there. I know, Rebecca, there's actually a formula for what you can get approved for. And, and Rebecca, what exactly what is that formula? Um, so we take two different types of formulas. There is what we call a front end ratio, which is just going to be your housing ratio and that is just your payment divided by your monthly income. And we do use gross income, not net, which would be after taxes. So that is allowed to be, on a conventional loan, 29%. Um, you can exceed those ratios if you have good credit, some compensating factors, money in the bank. And then the maximum on the back end is 45%. And what that means is that is your house payment and all of your other debts, such as car payments, revolving credit card, installment loans. Does not include consumer's energy, cable, car insurance. Awesome. Okay, so from a financial planner aspect, a lot of times people will go get approved and then they'll come to me and say, well, this is what I'm approved for. And so listening to that, you know, should you max out that 45% ratio? And, you know, the answer isn't yes or no. It, it really is what is that impact going to be on your finances, on your future, both in the short term and then also the long term. And, and when we're talking about long term, um, how is that going to impact you the next 10, 20, 30 years into retirement? Um, are you going to have to be cutting into your savings and, and things like that in order to be able to afford that? So um, the second question I get is, should people take money out of their retirement account um, to pay off their house? And the answer to that almost always is no. Um, again, sometimes sometimes the answer could be yes, but most of the time when we're looking at people taking out money out of their retirement account, if you're under 59 and a half, you typically have a penalty and it could be 10 or even 20%. And then you have taxes on top of that. And so when you look at the fact that you've got to take the money out and then you also have to pay taxes on that, which is typically coming from that retirement account, because that's why you need to take where you're taking the money out of, it really can impact your future pretty drastically. Um, so the other question is, I get a lot is about refinancing and um, you know, it's, I often get, should I refinance? You know, my payment will be lower. The one thing we have to really look at is amortization schedules. And I always tell my clients, get me an amortization schedule from your lender or whoever's quoting out the refinance. <laughs> because some, what happens is as you get into paying your loan, the longer you have that loan, the more principal you're paying off. And so more of your payment is going towards that principal instead of just interest. And so we really have to look at what are the benefits of you extending that loan or, or getting a smaller payment versus keeping the loan that you have. So so those are the, the really the big three questions that I get, and they're so loaded, and that's why we do financial planning and, and really look at how everybody's situation, which is so unique, is, is really going to affect them. So. You know, I want to talk a little bit more about what your ladies' backgrounds are. I know, Rebecca, you're a top producer at Icon Mortgage Lending. 
Christy, you are the number one female realtor for REMAX in Genesee County. I mean, those are both huge accomplishments, so kudos to both of you. And, and I know one thing that we have in common is we all started in our businesses in the, you know, when we were in our 20s. Uh, Rebecca, you've been doing this for 17 years. Christy, you've been doing this for tw- is 24. It 20, 24 years. So, you know, I've, I've been in the financial planning industry for 15, so um, you ladies have, you've got me a little bit there. But tell me, you know, Christy, how did, you know, how did you get into the real estate business and what really makes you different? Yep. I got into the real estate business. I answered an ad in the paper, actually. I was working in the grocery industry and decided I wanted something new. Answered an ad in the paper, and from there, I started my real estate career. Never knew it would end up where it has. I never knew I'd have to run a business and treat it as a business. But um, it's been very successful for me, and I enjoy it, and I still, to this day, can say I love what I do. Um, What separates us and my team, I guess, from our competitors or from different realtors is that um, I do have a team. I have a team of seven full-time people, and we specialize in taking care of our customers. For us, um, we have increased our business every year, and 82% of our business is repeat and referral. We believe in having our clients for life, and when we go in and meet with clients, we always figure out how to get our clients the most money and that's what we're noted for you know an 82 percent uh referral rate that's you know a repeat business that's that's pretty huge for realtors yes it it is okay yep a normal a lot about you and your team and and what you've been able to do yes those are huge numbers a normal i think realtor would probably have about a 50 percent um um, repeat referral business okay Awesome. Rebecca, you know, um, the mortgage, both you ladies, I mean, we went through this housing market um, where, I I mean, I know I had two homes that were underwater because my husband and I both bought houses um, six months before we met and then got married. So, you know, we had these two houses. I just got rid of one. I still have another one. um, And then I have my house in Fenton. So, you know, I know it it was extremely, when I started the industry, there were 50,000 mortgage people, 50,000 realtors. And it literally went to a time where, you know, most of the realtors I knew got out of business and all the mortgage people I knew really did get out of the business. And Rebecca, you know, how you've been in this 17 years, you've sustained that, you've grown your business through that time. You know, tell me, tell me how you got started and what makes you so different that you were able to sustain that time. So I I moved here um, at the end of 1998, and I started with a company called Town Mortgage. Um, I had never done mortgages before. They were willing to give me a shot, and it was something that I enjoyed right off the bat. I was the top producer in our office within the first six months that I was there. Wow. So it has always been something that I really enjoyed, and it has been tumultuous over the years, (laughs) as everybody knows, just because we have seen so many highs and lows in this market. I feel like we've probably seen the lowest low that we're going to see, you know, in a very, very long time. I hope. And I, I think so, too, but <laughs> I do. So, And uh, so I now work for a company called Icon Mortgage. They're a fantastic company. I can't say enough good things about them. I have great support staff. Uh, the owners of the company are fabulous. They do everything in the world they can to help each of us individually be successful and be at our very best. And so... I feel that that is definitely a key component of how you do your business is where you work and the support staff that you have and the people that, that you surround you every single day. Also, um, I'm, I'm 100% referral. So I'm 100% commission and 100% referral. I get all my business from repeat clients and from real estate agents that trust me enough to send their clients to me and know that I will get the job done. And I know, Rebecca, um, when I got my, you know, my mortgage on the house in Fenton, I had just met you. I just met you and, um, you know, I was going through that and, you know, it was amazing to me. You just, you know how to get stuff done. I mean, there's not anybody else that I'm, that I've met that I'm really comfortable saying, hey, to my clients, go see them. I I send them to you and, you know, within a matter of minutes, you have them approved or not approved. And there's a lot of different programs. We don't, we're not going to talk about all that today. Um, just because it's we have other stuff to talk about Um, but I know you've got a lot of programs available that other people don't and you know to me it's nice that I can send my clients to both of you guys um, you know and and know that they're going to get taken care of so you know one of the things Rebecca that just 
with myself and also my clients that I've seen is you actually pick up the phone on the weekends and, and nights. I do. I do. I think that is a... I tell everybody that I'm my busiest from 5 to 9 at night because people are working all day. Not everybody has the luxury of being able to make phone calls during their work day, answer their cell phone, answer personal emails that, you know, their employers may consider to be personal and not want them to do. So I have a lot of time during the day to, you know, work on conditions, work on people's files. But when 5 o'clock, 5.30 actually hits, my phone rings a lot. Also on the weekends because people have that extra time and they're out looking at houses, have questions, want to know what their payment's going to be. It's something that I've streamlined to very easily be able to say, hey, call me anytime you want. I'm here okay. to help. So I know uh, Rebecca, you know, workaholic, where's the balance? Christy, workaholic, where's the balance? I guess Margie, workaholic, where's the balance? <laughs> but, but, you know, you really have to, how do you ladies, and, and we've, we've only got a little bit of time before we got to take a break here, but is there anything that pops into your minds when I say balance? Like what, what do you do for balance? Yep. I actually have a personal coach that coaches me for real estate and a personal coach that coaches me for fitness. Um, I think that the more coaches you can have, the more accountable you will be. And I also have a weekly um, week at a glance calendar that I keep on my desk so I can see all of my appointments. So that helps tremendously. Great. We're going to take a quick break. And when we get back, we're going to talk more with Christy. And um, we're going to talk about the current real estate market and where it's been, where we're going, what we think what we think is going to happen. And then also we'll talk with Rebecca about um, the Ten Commandments of Buying a Home. So you're listening to the Margie Shard Show on Super Talk 1570. Stay tuned. Marty Shard and her team can help you through life's transitions. Whether it's retirement, widowhood, divorce, or remarriage, call 810-714-5566 for a free consultation. With Shard Financial, you'll get answers and results. Her office is at 1537 North Leroy Street in Fenton. Log on to her website at shardfinancial.com or call 810-714-5566 today. Securities and advisory services offered through LPL Financial, a registered investment advisor member, FINRA, SIP. Looking for a mortgage loan and need someone that you can trust with the biggest financial decision that your family will make? Hi, I'm Rebecca Bartley from Icon Mortgage, and I have 17 years of experience in this business. I offer on-the-spot pre-approvals so that you can start the search for your new home. From zero-down rural development loans to conventional and veterans loans, I can make it quick, simple, and all understandable. Put your trust in me, Rebecca Bartley, and call me today to take that first step toward home ownership. You can reach me at 810-516-4227 or go to my website at RebeccaBartley.com. Shard Financial presents Backpack Night, March 5th at 6 p.m. at the Holiday Inn Gateway Center. Sponsored by Chasse Paul Room and Latin Dance Studio of Fenton. Backpack Night is a fundraiser for a project of the Food Bank of Eastern Michigan, providing over 15,000 hungry children in Genesee County with a backpack that contains breakfast, lunch, and dinner each weekend and throughout the summer. You can help. Join us for Backpack Night, where you'll enjoy a strolling dinner, a fashion show, a comedy show, live and silent auctions, and more. Call 810-577-5291 or go to backpacknight.com for more information. Buying insurance doesn't need to be confusing. Jason Orton will answer all your questions and educate you on the product you're buying. Jason Orton is an independent agent with the David Chapman Agency. They've been serving mid-Michigan with affordable personal and commercial insurance needs for over 30 years. Don't let insurance confuse you. Call Jason Orton at 517-319-8225 or log on to his website at jasoneorton.com. The opinions expressed on this program are for general information only and are not intended to provide specific advice or recommendations for any individual. To determine which investments may be appropriate for you, consult with your attorney, accountant, financial advisor, or tax advisor prior to investing. Securities are offered through LPL Financial, member FINRA and SIPC. This is the Margie Shard Show on Super Talk 1570. Welcome back to the Margie Shard Show on Super Talk 1570. We're in the studio today with Rebecca Bartley with Icon Mortgage and Christy Canelberry of Remax Brand. And we are talking about real estate today and mortgages and everything that's going on. 
But before we get into that, real quick, uh, post your 2015 number one goal or resolution on our Shard Financial Facebook page, and you'll be entered to win a $50 gift card to Redwood Lodge. Okay, Christy, let's talk real estate. Okay. What is going on with the current real estate market? I know, you know, we had this horrible market a few years ago, and then the last two mar- years, it just seems like the real estate market's been on fire. Yep, the market has definitely changed. Um, I do track everything and look at all the statistics. And 2005 was actually our strongest market in our area. Um, our average sales prices then were about 196000 and that incorporates all of Genesee County. Um, 2009 was our lowest market, and average sales prices dropped to $114,000. Right now, we are seeing huge signs of recovery over the past couple of years. Um, Last year's growth rate for our county was 22%. Wow. So that's huge for us. Um, It's up a little or down a little, just depending on the county, but um, as an average, it was up 22%. So we're seeing the last couple of years have been really good for the real estate industry. So, Realtor Magazine is actually predicting that the national real estate growth rate will be 3% for 2015. Is that in line with what you're expecting locally, or can we maybe see some more around here, or what What do you think is going to happen? I'm, I think you're going to see it still go up a little bit, not tons, but a little bit. Um, like I said, um, if you look at southern Genesee County, the growth rate was 11% last year. Northern Genesee County, the growth rate was 25 percent so what do you think do you, you know versus the three percent national average yep. what do you think southern genesee and northern genesee i think be? you're going to see it up as a total county we were up 22 percent last year i think you'll see it up about maybe 25 percent this year wow so okay it's be so a better. Lot higher than than our national average why do you think it's going to move a little bit higher i think there's a huge shortage of inventory and when there ever there's a short shortage of inventory like that you see prices drive up because there aren't as many homes for buyers to choose from and are you seeing more cash buyers right now or we are more? we actually okay. probably about a quarter not even a quarter i would say probably maybe an eighth of our transactions were cash last year okay so let's talk christy you've got the christy candleberry team and you have seven member seven members correct on your team explain to our listeners what is what's the difference between the seller's agents and the buyer's agents yep Really, it just depends if you're buying or selling. When you go to sell a home, of course, you get me and we represent the seller. Our job as a seller's agent is to get our sellers the highest dollar that we can and to negotiate in their best interest. So whatever we do is in that seller's best interest. When you work with a buyer's agent on my team or any buyer's agent, the buyer's agent is responsible for getting the buyer the house at the best price and representing that buyer and not disclosing any confidential information about the buyer to the other agent or to the seller. Okay, so let's talk about you have a house. Let's let's assume you have a house and you've listed it and one of your buyer's agents finds you know, the person that wants to buy that house. Correct. How do you avoid conflict of interest in that scenario? Yep, that's a great question. We do get that quite a bit. Um, Really, it comes down to confidentiality. We become what's called a dual agent, where we don't represent the buyer or the seller, but both parties know that what we do is, um, I shouldn't say we don't represent them, but we can't disclose any confidential information about the buyer to the seller and vice versa. We can't disclose any confidential information about the seller to the buyer. So really, it boils down to you have to trust those agents that you work with because they have to keep your information confidential. That's what we do and that's what you hire an agent for. So are you just negotiating kind of between yourselves and then going back to the buyers and sellers and saying, look, this is, you know, the fair, what we think is going to get the deal done and how bad do you want it or correct you know because it's got to be a I would think that would be a difficult position to be in it is a difficult position it's a little easier on my team because I usually don't meet the buyers that my buyers agents are working with and they usually don't meet the sellers that I'm working with so it kind of separates it so it's a little bit easier but um yeah we basically um you just can't disclose that confidential information. I mean, that's the best way to put it is, you know, what you tell me. So, for instance, if you're selling your house, Margie, and you go in and we list it for 200000 and you say, Christy, I'll take one ninety five. Well, if my buyer team brings the buyer, I have to go at it as, okay, Margie, here's the offer. I don't know what the buyer will come up to. I don't know. What do you want to counter it? So really, it's whatever the seller is going to take and whatever the buyer is willing to pay. Our job is to put that transaction together. Okay. So 
what should a seller be asking their realtor when they interview them? You know, if you want to sell your house, what are the, the crucial things that, because there's there's a lot of realtors out there, and I know a lot of great realtors, and they all run their business differently. Yeah. And um, but, but really, how do you separate the great realtors from the not so great realtors and, and the right realtor for you yeah. as well? I think it is important. You have to have the right realtor for you, and not everybody meshes with everybody it, it's 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 just the way it is so um i think the number one thing is when you meet with somebody is you have to know that they look out for your best interest so we are noted and we always try to get top dollar for our clients and you could get five different opinions and get five different pricing aspects mm -hmm. of your home so i think you really have to have somebody that's going to present all of the facts to you show you what has sold in the past six months what is currently for sale and how your house stands in the marketplace um, the, the crucial crucial questions for you to ask as a seller is what is the top dollar that i can get for my home in the condition that it's in and how long <laughs> will it take to sell because it does matter urgency or not urgent urgent um, it matters, you know, where you stand as a seller and are you willing to put work into the house if it needs it? Are you not? You know, all those things do play a factor. It does help to have a realtor walk through the home or have me walk through the home and take a look at it and let you know what absolutely will need to be done to get you top dollar in this market. Okay. So say I'm a buyer and um, whether I'm a first time buyer or a seasoned buyer, it, it, well, let me back up. Does that even matter if for the question I'm going to ask, but what, what should buyers be asking the agents before they, you know, decide who they're going to work with? Yep. And, and does it matter if you're a new homeowner or home buyer or if you're a seasoned buyer? Right. I don't think it matters. A buyer is, is a buyer and, you know, that's your goal is to buy a house. So I think the number one thing is how much house can I afford and what is in my budget? So therefore, you'd want to consult Rebecca or a loan officer to see, you know, how much house you can afford. In this market, it's super important to have a buyer's agent represent you because the market is so short on inventory, meaning homes for sale. So what a buyer needs to know is if you find a house that you fall in love with, there could be three, four, five offers on that home. So you have to have an agent that knows how to negotiate in a multi-offer scenario. <coughs> and then you also, the buyer needs to know what the process is to buy a home because once they find a home, you have to be ready, willing, and able and have everything in line to purchase that home. And Rebecca can kind of back me on that a little bit. Absolutely. That's the very best thing to do. And you definitely need to talk to your financial planner, too, Absolutely. because you need to see if you can afford that house and what impact that's going to have. And, you know, if you're it, it, I think, you know, when Rebecca, when you talk about the formula of how to get approved and the 45 percent and 35 percent, I mean, it's it's all great. But there's other expenses that aren't factored. There in are there. a lot and of things that people don't take into account. My degree is actually in finance. So I think that separates me from a few other people around here. But um, I look at people's residual income. Um, you know, what are you going to have left over after you make this $1,500 house payment? Are you going to have money for consumers? Are you going to be completely house poor? Because I don't want to put somebody into a house that's not going to own that house 10 years from now. Okay. So, so Christy, you know, you're talking about this market that we have that is I mean, it sounds like it's on fire, um, except if you need more inventory. Right. We do need inventory. It's on fire, but, you know, you can. we need listings. That's what we need in this market. But the fact that the listings are down is driving prices up. So that's so helping us. Do you think that if, you know, you want to, if someone wants to go sell their house, is it better to go sell it now or is it better to wait? What What's your opinion on that? I would say sell it now because when I look back over the past 12 months and I track where every sale comes from we've been consistent with 12 to 15 sales every single month so I don't think it matters there's always buyers out there um, the less inventory of course the higher your chances are of getting your price um, you know if you wait till sometimes if you wait till the summer when more homes may come on the market prices may come down just slightly but for the most part we've remained in a really strong market you know one of the things I've been advising my clients on is you know yes you know your your price value may go up and, and maybe your house is worth a little bit more at the end of this year but when you look at what you're able to get especially if you're upgrading a home and what the value of of that home might be a year from now you really can get some pretty good de I mean there's some pretty good deals out there isn't there there are there really are it just depends on what your needs are 
But if you're ready to buy, we can definitely find you the home, even if we have to start calling neighborhoods, if we have to start calling everybody we know. Ooh, she's aggressive. <laughs> yeah, I we'll, love that. We'll find the home for you. So She's on it. Yeah. So what are some things that if, if you're looking to sell your home, are, are there... Are there anything specific that you typically tell sellers to make sure that they do to their home? No, I say always let me do a walkthrough. I think that's super important because what you think might need to be fixed or upgraded or new carpet or that might not need to be done in this market. Okay, great. Well, when we get back, we're going to be talking more with Rebecca and we're going to be talking about the 10 commandments of buying a home which you're not going to want to miss if you want to buy a home in the near future. And you're listening to The Margie Shard Show on Super Talk 1570. Stay tuned. mortgage loan and need someone that you can trust with the biggest financial decision that your family will make? Hi, I'm Rebecca Bartley from Icon Mortgage and I have 17 years of experience in this business. I offer on-the-spot pre-approvals so that you can start the search for your new home. From zero down rural development loans to conventional and veterans loans, I can make it quick, simple, and all understandable. Put your trust in me, Rebecca Bartley, and call me today to take that first step toward home ownership. You can reach me at 810-516-4227 or go to my website at RebeccaBartley.com. Marty Shard and her team can help you through life's transitions. Whether it's retirement, widowhood, divorce, or remarriage, call 810-714-5566 for a free consultation. With Shard Financial, you'll get answers and results. Her office is at 1537 North Leroy Street in Fenton. Log on to her website at shardfinancial.com or call 810-714-5566 today. Securities and advisory services offered through LPL Financial, a registered investment advisor member, FINRA SIPC. Are you getting ready to sell or buy your home? Need some real, honest advice? A realtor who will actually get real with you? No false promises? Just plain, good old-fashioned care, trust, and advice? Then you need to get Christy. Hi, I'm Christy Cannellary of REMAX Grand. I have 20 years' experience in this area, and the number one value I bring to my clients is trust and honesty. I get real with them, and I get them moving in the right direction. Call 810-691-5914. That's 691-5914. Or go to getchristy.com. Stand out from your competition with a custom-made dynamic website from Shard Marketing and Branding, your small business marketing solution. Whether it's website design, social media management, referral marketing, event management, graphic design, community engagement, and business development services, Shard Marketing and Branding is your small business marketing solution. Call 810-577-5291 or log on to shardmb.com today. The opinions expressed on this program are for general information only and are not intended to provide specific advice or recommendations for any individual. To determine which investments may be appropriate for you, consult with your attorney, accountant, financial advisor, or tax advisor prior to investing. Securities are offered through LPL Financial, member FINRA and SIPC. This is the Margie Shard Show on Super Talk 1570. Welcome back to the Margie Shard Show on Super Talk 1570. We're in the studio with Christy Candleberry from Remax Grand and Rebecca Mark Bartley from Icon Mortgage Lending. I really screwed up your name there, Rebecca. Thanks, Margie. <laughs> so we're going to talk with Rebecca a little bit more about the Ten Commandments of Buying a Home. And, you know, I, I have this document in front of me that she created. And, and Rebecca, why did you, why'd you create this document? Because, believe it or not, people out there are not aware of things that they actually cannot or should not do while in the process of trying to buy a home. Okay. So when they're trying to buy a home, if they do these things, what what happens? Each scenario is different, but in a lot of scenarios, it could actually take them out of the ability to purchase a home. Oh, ouch. I will yes. back that. <laughs> Ooh, that's not fun for anybody involved. I uh, know. Okay, so let's start with number one. What The first commandment you have here, thou shall not change jobs, become self-employed, or quit your job. Why is that? Now, you would think that that would just go without saying, but I have actually had somebody go from being W-2'd to being 1099'd 
in the middle of a pro- in the middle of purchasing a home. So how does that change the scenario? The problem with that is is that when you're a 1099 employee and you are you're subcontracted basically and you file your tax returns, you have to have two full years of tax returns because we use an average of two years earnings on a 1099 employee. For a W-2 employee, you typically don't have the same unreimbursed business expenses and the write-offs, so we calculate based on your actual income from your employer. So it is two different types of jobs. Is it a big deal if you go from self-employed to an employee? It is actually works in your benefit. Okay, so then Mm. that's, okay, good. Okay, so if you are going to change jobs, become an employee. Correct. For where more money, I'm assuming. Yes. Okay. Number two, thou shall not buy a car, truck, or van. And then I love what you have written here. Why don't you say it? Or you may be living in it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to live in my car. I know. I mean, I like my car, but not that much. So why? How, why? Why can't they buy a car or a truck or a van? So it's not necessarily that they can't. I say this to them because I want them to consult with me before they make a large purchase. A lot of them. Wow, you sound like me in uh, in the financial planning process. Right. Well, I don't. If they don't have a car payment right now, and their debt to income ratio has been calculated, and they're in the middle of purchasing a home, and now they add a five hundred dollar a month payment to it, that can actually it skews the debt to income ratio, and then it could possibly kill the deal. Oh. Okay. So how important is that new vehicle, basically? Right. Can you is wait thirty days? Wait okay. thirty days and purchase a vehicle. Okay. The third commandment you have says, thou shall not use credit cards excessively or let current accounts fall behind. What does excessively mean? So if you have a Visa card that I pull your credit report and you have a $500 balance on it, and then we pull your credit report prior to closing and you have a $5,000 balance on it, which then changes your minimum monthly payment from $25 a month to $230 a month. I'm not saying that that's what the, your payment is on a $5,000 credit card. I'm saying it Just averages. Just an example. Is an example. Yes. Okay. So basically, it depends on what's being added or... So again, it goes to debt ratio. Also, you can't fall behind on anything. If we pull your credit report in a transaction, and typically we will pull your credit report at the end, it's a soft pull to make sure that nothing has changed. But if your credit scores drastically go down, it can also affect your deal. It can affect your interest rate, and it can affect many other variables. So it is very important to leave everything as is from the day you let me pull your credit until the day we close. So keep paying your bills basically correct and i mean uh, people are going to put their credit their appraisal on a credit card they're going to put a lot of them put the homeowner's insurance on a credit card those things are fine we account for those to happen but not anything too excessive don't take a european vacation on your credit card in the middle of getting a mortgage do you have a lot of people that just stop paying their bills i mean because that really surprised me when i saw that yes i i had several deals we ended up getting to work out last year, but there were people that made late car payments, late credit card payments, and it affected their rate, and it affected a lot of things about the transaction. So basically, you want to pay And it puts everybody else in a, they don't, it's not just about them, it puts everybody else in a bad situation. They now have sellers that have had their home off the market, realtors that have sold them another home. So there's usually a domino effect when this happens. Okay. Um, So number four, Thou shall not spend money you've set aside for closing. Kind of goes without saying, right? Don't go sh- but, but close shopping. Don't go to Nordstrom's on a shopping spree when you need money for closing. Do you see this happen a lot? We do. What are they? Uh, what What are they? Uh, is that what they're spending their money on? Clothing or uh, it could multiple things. Clothing, vacations. I, I had somebody Appliances. last year go to Florida and blew all their closing money and came back and freaked out, not knowing how they were going to close on their house, and they had to get a gift from their parents. Appliances, yes, absolutely another thing. Buying furniture prior to closing. Well, buying furniture is number six. It is. Thou shall not buy furniture. Thou shall not buy furniture until you close. So uh, why, why are people doing that? Is it because there's so much of a wait before they get in their house that they want to make sure their furniture is there on day one? or they Could be excited. multiple things. They, they get, get excited. super excited. They get a little overzealous. A lot of things just come from them being excited and overzealous, not really trying to do the wrong thing, just out of excitement. So if you're going to buy furniture, you really want to make sure that you're paying cash and it's not with any of your deposit money or any of the funds, maybe other that accounts that you closing. need to qualify for. Right. Okay. Number five, thou shall not omit debts or liabilities from your loan application. 
Is that called fraud? I guess you could say that. Um, people don't think about certain things. Child support, alimony, their debts. Tell me about them. Don't lie, because I'm going to find out when I run a background check. And yes, we run background checks. So by the time someone is done getting a mortgage, I know more about them than they do. Wow. So it's important for them not to lie. Background checks are run. We pull fraud checks on everybody. You know, when I do financial planning, a lot of times I'll tell, you know, we, we need to know everything about everyone as well and so we don't run background checks but one of the issues is if clients are not telling you the whole truth whether they forgot or whether they're just you know not telling you because they're embarrassed or they just think it doesn't matter what happens is it just throws everything off and so I'm assuming that the more that they are able to tell you if there is a problem that you're probably able to kind of stop it dead in its tracks and address it and and figure it out so that hopefully they can close on a loan versus Correct. Versus not. Is, is that the case? It is. I've had people not tell me that they were in the middle of getting a divorce, something very important, and you cannot buy a house when you're in the middle of getting a divorce, period. The reason for that is there is no judgment of divorce. Nobody knows what's going to happen. Are you going to be paying child support? Is somebody going to be paying alimony? Is that going to affect the amount of house that you can afford? So alimony and child support are definitely two things that you can't omit. Now, I always look on someone's paycheck stub just to make sure there's not something there that they haven't told me about, but I... I'm sure Christy has seen it before. We've just seen it where it happened in the middle of a transaction. They didn't disclose anything, and again, affected everybody else in the transaction. Okay. So number seven says, thou shall not originate any inquiries into your credit. Can you explain that a little bit? Inquiries are a funny thing. People think that inquiries lower their credit scores every single time they have one. I have found that that's not necessarily the case, but it's not a good idea to have a multiple people pulling your credit while you're trying to get a mortgage. Now, if you're shopping for a mortgage and you've had three mortgage people pull your credit and you come to me and I need to pull your credit, it's going to stay the same. They know that people are going to shop for a mortgage. They're not going to lower your score because you're mortgage shopping. Now, if you go buy a car and 20 dealers run your credit, you have a problem. Your credit score probably will go down. Also, same with credit cards. Credit cards tend to make those scores go down and there are multiple reasons, which I don't really need to get into with, you know, about it, but there are just multiple reasons, so be careful, you know, applying for too much credit while you're getting a mortgage. Okay. Number eight really shocked me when I saw this, and it says, thou shall not make large deposits without checking with your loan officer. To me, it makes sense that you would deposit money in your accounts, and I, I guess, what do you mean by that? So basically, we just have to source where your money came from. You can't just have a whole bunch of cash laying in your safe at home, $20,000, and go deposit it into the bank. The reason for that is because of the Patriot Act. It's based on money laundering and terrorism, and they just don't allow it because they are concerned about that. If you try to go put cash in someone else's bank account at several institutions in Genesee County, they won't let you, same reason. Okay. Number nine, thou shall not change bank accounts quickly. What's, what's the deal with that? Again, people just don't want the paper trail. So they don't want to have to give me the paper trail, which I will need if about now all of a sudden you've closed this account, you have a large deposit into this account, and it's brand new and just opened and not established. So it's just best not to do it in the middle of a transaction. So basically it creates more work for everybody involved. It does. It's more work mainly for the customer, not for me, and they don't want to go through it, and I don't want to have to make them jump through a bunch of hoops. I'm sure you hear about it, though. I do. <laughs> <laughs> Number 10, the final 10 commandment of buying a home says you should not co-sign a loan for anyone. Not while you're in the middle of buying a house. Okay. And why Again, is that? Again, that just goes to the debt-to-income ratio. You co-sign on a loan, you are now legally obligated to repay that loan. If that person doesn't, now your debt-to-income ratio is out of line. Okay, so... I, I think this is a really important thing, and I think the fact that you give this to your clients, you know, while when they apply is, is a big deal because, you know, I, I, I think some of this stuff may be more common sense to some people than others, but some of this is just, and especially a new home buyer, people that really don't understand how the whole process works, you know, it, it's, if you can look at this and, and not do what, or I'm sorry, follow what it says because it says thou shall not, 
I think uh, it probably puts people in a lot better space. So we're going to take a quick break here, and when we come back, we're going to continue our conversation on the real estate market and mortgages and talk about some programs that um, are actually available for home buyers. And you're listening to the Margie Shard Show on Super Talk 1570. Stay tuned. Are you getting ready to sell or buy your home? Need some real, honest advice? A realtor who will actually get real with you? No false promises? Just plain, good old-fashioned care, trust, and advice? Then you need to get Christy. Hi, I'm Christy Cannellary of Remax Grand. I have 20 years' experience in this area, and the number one value I bring to my clients is trust and honesty. I get real with them, and I get them moving in the right direction. Call 810-691-5914. That's 691-5914. Or go to getchristy.com. Margie Shard and her team can help you through life's transitions. Whether it's retirement, widowhood, divorce, or remarriage, call 810-714-5566 for a free consultation. With Shard Financial, you'll get answers and results. Her office is at 1537 North Leroy Street in Fenton. Log on to her website at shardfinancial.com or call 810-714-5566 today. Securities and advisory services offered through LPL Financial, a registered investment advisor member, FINRA, SIPC. Shard Financial presents Backpack Night, March 5th at 6 p.m. at the Holiday Inn Gateway Center, sponsored by Chasse Paul Room and Latin Dance Studio of Fenton. Backpack Night is a fundraiser for a project of the Food Bank of Eastern Michigan, providing over 15,000 hungry children in Genesee County with a backpack that contains breakfast, lunch, and dinner each weekend and throughout the summer. You can help. Join us for Backpack Night, where you'll enjoy a strolling dinner, a fashion show, a comedy show, live and silent auctions, and more. Call 810-577-5291 or go to backpacknight.com for more information. Stand out from your competition with a custom-made dynamic website from Shard Marketing and Branding, your small business marketing solution. Whether it's website design, social media management, referral marketing, event management, graphic design, community engagement, and business development services, Shard Marketing and Branding is your small business marketing solution. Call 810-577-5291 or log on to shardmb.com today. The opinions expressed on this program are for general information only and are not intended to provide specific advice or recommendations for any individual. To determine which investments may be appropriate for you, consult with your attorney, accountant, financial advisor, or tax advisor prior to investing. Securities are offered through LPL Financial, member FINRA and SIPC. This is the Margie Shard Show on Super Talk 1570. Welcome back to the Margie Shard Show on Super Talk 1570. I'm in the studio today with Rebecca Bartley from Icon Mortgage Lending and Christy Candleberry with the Christy Candleberry team of Remax Grand. And we've been talking about real estate and mortgages. Um, Rebecca just finished talking to us about the Ten Commandments of Buying a Home. And Rebecca, um, for those that are thinking of buying a home, I'm going to urge you to call Rebecca. You can reach her at 810 516 or 227 or at rebeccabartley.com and she will actually give you a copy of the Ten Commandments of buying a home that we just went through and she can also approve you tell you how much you can buy okay um, Christy if you are thinking of buying a home or selling your home either go to getchristy.com or contact Christy at 810-691-5914 and she will give you a free valuation of your home and let you know what she thinks it'll sell for and all the things that we've been discussing here. So ladies, let's talk a little bit more about what's going on in the mortgage industry, uh, what's going on in the real estate market. Rebecca, if someone wants to buy a house, what are the first things that they're gonna have to give to you? Because it, it can be kind of scary having to disclose your whole financial information. Just, you know, I do financial planning and people disclose their whole life to me. But I remember when I was buying a house, I'm like, I don't want everyone to know my information because I want it to remain confidential. And um, I thought, oh, gosh, they're going to, you know, need 50,000 documents from me, especially because I'm self-employed. And so, so what do you need from people? Well, it's not that hard. And the first thing that people do need to realize is that they are all um, covered by a Privacy Act. They sign one when they come in and see me, but I am state licensed and federally licensed and all their information does remain completely confidential. So for somebody that's a W-2 employee, I just need 
a W-2 from the last year and their last month of pay stubs. If they are 1099, I just need two years tax returns with all schedules. And I was really shocked and pleasantly surprised when I got my mortgage through you and realized how simple it was and, and how I didn't have to, you know, I mean, I didn't have to jump through hoops. So um, I thank you. I appreciated that. Um, the other thing I wanted to ask you, Rebecca, is, you know, the mortgage industry has changed a lot. And I know programs that used to be out there used to be able to buy 100% of your loan to value. Used to, I mean, I think they had 110% at one time or something crazy like that. Yes, they did. You know, what are just a, and we don't, we could do a whole show on these programs, but just a couple popular programs that are out there and, you know, do people have to do 20% down conventional mortgage? People do not have to do 20% down. It's a common misconception, but there's 5% down conventional. You can do 10, 15, 20% down conventional. Um, there's rural development, which is a USDA program. It is zero down. It's just geographically Did you just say specific. zero down? I did. So 100% financing. It's 100% financing. Wow. There are just two stipulations. It is income regulated, so you have to be under a certain amount of income. So for one to four family in Genesee County, it's 74750 And for five to eight, it's 91850 94650 I'm sorry, 94650 I mean, that opens the door for a lot of people who, you know, maybe are renting and throwing away quite a bit of money every month. It does. It's also geographically specific. So it's Linden, Fenton, Swartz Creek, Davison, Goodrich, Gaines, nothing in the city of Flint. Some things in Grand Blank that are more towards the Mundy Township area. But uh, yes, yeah, so you do have to be purchasing in those specific areas to be able to utilize this particular program. And then there's FHA, another common program, which is only three and a half percent down. And all the money can be gifted on this program as well. Wow. Okay, great. So one of the things I wanted to talk to you guys about, because I didn't realize until I went through my process and then, you know, the more that I refer clients to to both of you, there's a lot of, of work and, and a lot of things that go on behind the scenes, you know, once an offer is made and the, the seller has accepted the offer, the buyer, you know, they have to get an appraisal or inspection or whatever, uh, you know, if they want that inspection, but... I was shocked at the amount of um, communication and, and, and dealings that the mortgage person has with the realtor. And I've seen some of my clients' situations really blow up because they weren't working with you guys. And I know when my clients are working with you guys, it's it's a pretty streamlined process. Excuse me. Can you explain? <coughs> excuse me. Can you explain? You know what what goes on behind closed doors? That's probably the most important part of the <laughs> transaction. Um, I'll tell you, from the time we receive and accept an offer, we are in contact with a lender every single week to make sure that that transaction is on track, that the lender has everything that they need, and that we can get that transaction to the closing table. And that's where you really want to have a seasoned agent and an agent that knows your lenders, knows your appraisers, knows what questions to ask because... 30 days from now or 40 days from now, we need to know that we're going to have a closing. Rebecca, you might want to add to yeah, that. Yeah, no, I would I would completely agree. It's, it's very important, and people don't even realize how important it is for the realtor and the lender to be able to work in conjunction to get the deal done because this, the buyer may not even know, but we're in contact nonstop. There are times when I've been in contact with Christy three, four times in a day on a transaction to work through things that need to be done, whether it be an appraisal or a title issue or just anything, really. Yeah. I actually put a pending manager in place, and all she does all day long is follow up with our pending transactions. Wow. Yeah, you know, I know when I went through buying my house, and I worked with both of you, and um, actually, back at one point, we were on vacation together, and, you know, you were still working, of course, <coughs> workaholic. But um, I, I remember, you know, there were just a lot of things in... You know, I had just met you, Rebecca. I had, I mean, we didn't know each other super well. And then Christy, I had known you a little bit longer, but I had never done a transaction. You know, I've, I never had done anything with either of you. And so it was my first time working with you. And one of the things that, you know, really surprised me is all the things, and you guys were trying to keep me informed, and, and I really had the attitude of, hey, I trust you guys, so just don't even tell me about it and do it. But because you were keeping me informed, I was really amazed at, all the things. I mean, it's not just about, I thought it was just, okay, appraisal, get your appraisal done, get your inspection done. You know, yeah, you've got the title company, but what are some things that, 
that happen that that buyers and sellers don't know a lot about don't don't know are going on maybe from the lending aspect Tell me the dirty <laughs> from the lending aspect i think that it is um you know they come in they sign a bunch of paperwork and then their file goes to underwriting and from there we have a lot of conditions now the, the thing that people don't understand is how heavily we are regulated by the government to protect everybody and so there are a lot of things we have to do compliance wise that they never see i mean there are they sign 10 different pieces of paper that say that they get a copy of their appraisal um, we then have to show that and then give them a copy of their appraisal and then get them to sign it again after they see their appraisal so there are many many checks and balances on our end that they will never see which is why people don't understand why it takes 30 days to buy a home but that's why yep and on our end from the real estate end we have a lot of appraisers that will call us and say I'm having trouble you know establishing value can you pull some comparables and show us you know what you can come up with and we have to get all that to the appraiser and we don't even let our clients a lot of the times know we just take care of it um, the lender requests certain documentation and we have to get that to the lender title work we pull title work and if there's an issue on title or maybe the house is in a trust and now we need trust papers um, there's a lot of behind the scenes work like I said that's really where the transaction starts and really where you need that harmony between the realtor and the lender and you really do need the best of the best taking care of it because they need to get it to the closing they, they you need somebody that can whatever they tell you you know it's the truth so the new regulations that have come out I know Rebecca you're just um, I say this sarcastically super in love with the new regulations that have come out <laughs> elated but I mean it's really made a lot more issues I guess is the right word to for for mortgage for mortgages to actually get closed it has they put a lot of new regulations in place and you know some coming you know this year even as far as you know once we receive a clear to close you can't close for 72 hours now it's never been like that and that will be going into effect this year supposedly august 1st but i'm pretty sure everybody's going to adopt it april 1st wow okay we're going to get through it though yes so why why is that what what was the reasoning behind that or do we not know the consumer financial protection bureau came out and said that once a loan is clear to close they would like us to have a buyer come in and sign a pre-closing document it is a six-page document that in my opinion will just confuse them even more but we will go ahead and have them sign it and then once it is signed they have to wait 72 hours to close so wow. there will be no so more rush to, closings. So are you, are the clients having to go to the title company twice then? No, they come, they, they sign this document with me. Can they electronically sign it? They cannot. They cannot oh electronically sign any mortgage documents. Wow. Okay. So I, and we're, we're running out of time here, but um, real quick, I know that there's a new regulation that's coming out and I'll, I'm going to actually do a different segment to talk probably more in scope about this, but um you know, they, they came out and I saw a video on Facebook and they were saying that um, basically in the next, starting in January, there's some big changes coming. Do you want oh, to is briefly? that the appraisal video that yes. I shared? It's just a video um, regarding Fannie and Freddie backed loans. What those are, are conventional loans. Um, and they just want their appraisals to be more secure because they're concerned we're in a bubble. And a bubble just means that, you know, our prices have topped out and they don't want uh, prices to drop again. So it's just going to be comparables and how they look at the appraisal and once the appraisal is done they're going to pull up to 20 more comparables on their own and determine their value from there and then the appraiser will have to rebuttal with why he used whatever comps he used if they argue it at all i would hate to be an appraiser me too um so we'll, we'll talk about that in a different show because okay. i think there's a lot of um issues with that and there's things i know that um kind of freak me out about that. Go to our Shard Financial Facebook page and tell us what your number one goal or your New Year's resolution is for 2015 to be entered to win a $50 gift card to Redwood Lodge. And you're listening to the Margie Shard Show on Super Talk 1570. Thank you to our sponsors, Rebecca Bartley, Chris Kennedy. From Flint, Michigan to around the world at supertalk1570.com. WWCK AM, a cumulus station.